hey YouTube crafters and overall people who want to know how to make stuff. Today I'm going to be making laundry detergent. Now you can you you can make a dry version or you can make the liquid version. I prefer the liquid. My washer also prefers the liquid. But I will tell you how you can do the dry. So let's go ahead and get started. You will need washing soda. Soda. Okay. You will also need borax. And you're also going to need soap. Doesn't matter what kind of soap. Can be your favorite soap. I'm using ivory. Because it's just not a big thing for me. I don't care. Either way. Because I can always add my own fragrance to this detergent. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to be making mine a liquid detergent. But if you want to make your detergent a uh, granulated form, it's simple. Depending on how much of it you want to make, I would suggest making quite a bit at once, but grab about two cups of washing soda, two cups of borax, great, two bars of your favorite soap, and mix it all up. And voila, you have your detergent. Really simple, right? So why make a video? Well, I'm doing liquid, and sometimes some people are visual, so we're going to have a visual. I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm making about a 10-gallon bucket, so I'm going to be using more, a considerable amount more. Instead of two bars of soap, uh, soap huh, I'll be using four. And, and if you don't want to use regular soap, like you don't want to use an Irish Spring or Ivory, you can always use Zote. It's Z-O-T-E. Zote. Uh, you can purchase that at Target. You can also purchase it at Kroger. Zote is a laundry soap. If you have a stain on your clothes, you wet it, rub it with some Zote, and then wash like you normally would wash to get the stain out. So a lot of people don't know what Zote is, so now you know. A lot of people would prefer to use Zote instead of using, you know, bar soap. Me, I don't care. So, I'm, I'm not that big on fragrances in my washing stuff because, like in my detergent, because I use a fabric softener and that's what I want to smell good and not necessarily my detergent. Okay. If I don't look at the camera very much, it's because I can't see <laughs> with my glasses. Okay, so now you know how to make the dry version. Let's go ahead and get started on the liquid. Before I move on, let me tell you where to purchase. You can purchase both borax and washing soda at Kroger. But not all Kroger stores carry it for whatever reason. If you have a large Kroger in your area, nine times out of ten, you probably have it at your large Kroger. Also, if you have a Kroger that is really, like, they have a lot of canning supplies, then you're going to have, you'll definitely have it. I went and found mine on the aisle where they keep all the canning supplies, so all of the mason jars and, you know, things of that nature. That's where you're going to find washing soda and borax. Okay? And I quit hitting stuff. Sorry. Okay. Another place that you can purchase this is at Target. Again, not all Target stores have them, but mine do. So you can purchase that, and you can also purchase Zoat at Target. So get your washing soda, get your borax. Really cheap way to make your own detergent. And you guys know, if you've ever been to my blog... I'm a heavy couponer, so <laughs> I probably have about a hundred bottles of detergent, but I'm a firm believer in prepare for war at a time of peace. I was raised up on that thought, so just because I have it doesn't mean I always use it. So <laughs> I want to I want to keep having it. It's just like money, you know. You don't spend it because you have it. 
You try and earn more so you'll continue to have it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do, since I'm making the 10-gallon bucket, mine will be four bars of soap, so I need to start grating the soap. I'm going to grate it, put it into a bowl over the top of a pot of hot boiling water, and kind of create a double boiler type effect. Or I could just grab my little double boiler, it's tiny, but I may use that. Okay, so that's what you have to do. But grate the soap so you're not standing here all day waiting on your soap to melt. Use a plain old grater. I use a really old grater because everything that I'm using now to make the soap, I don't use that for food. So <laughs> don't use anything that you use for food, please. It's just, I mean, you're going to clean it, but yeah, don't do that. So. I'll go ahead and get my soap grated, get it into the pot, and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright guys, so, got my soap grated. Let me show it to you. That's a grated soup. Okay, so all we're going to do at this point is move it over into the bowl. And like I said, we created a bit of a double boiler type effect. Ooh, um, see here, <laughs> to pass off my camera, but, yeah, so there we go, so all the soap, and like I said, you can use whatever kind of soap you want, but with it being grated like this, it won't take as long to melt, so it's going to just sit and melt on its own, uh, you can come in, you can stir it, and it's it's moving because it's in a bowl, or just a silver mixing bowl that you sit on top of water in a pot. So that's your homemade double boiler. So now while this melts, I'll get my spoon, stir it a little bit, help it along the way, and then I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, guys. So while the soap is melting I wanted to go ahead and take care of this the whew, measuring of the washing soda I'm using the bowl that I had the soap flakes in so that's why it's dirty but like I said I'm doing four cups of washing soda one And this is not a one cup measuring cup, so if you're wondering, oh my god, she did too many, that's why. And that's it. Okay. So that's four cups of my washing soda. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the four cups of borax. If you have a uh, powder detergent around your house that, I don't know, for whatever reason you don't care for it, or maybe you're like me, your washing machine just doesn't do well with powdered detergents. Gosh, my borax is clumped up, y'all. <laughs> like I was saying, then you can throw that in here and turn it into a liquid detergent. So, I mean, that's always an option for those who have the washing machines that... It don't work well with the power. Okay. Luckily, I have done this so much. Because look at these big bricks. <laughs> but I've done this so much, I know about how much from the box to use. Because you use, you use nearly the whole box of washing soap. 
Same way for the borax. But look at how big those clumps are. <laughs> Awful. So I'm just going to put this in the bowl. Mix it together really, really well. And I'm also going to go ahead and put in about a half of my 10 gallon bucket of water. And for those of you not using a 10 gallon bucket, I'll tell you what to use. But make sure your water is hot. Boiling, smoking hot. But I'll be right back in a second to let you know I need to go stir the soup. Alrighty. So, like I was saying, I need to stir the soap. Look at how the soap is starting to clump up a little bit. It's starting to get pasty. That's what we want. It's like, ooh, the girl, I've done something wrong, but no, that's what we want. At this stage, you typically put in a little bit of water. Instead of water, I'm going to put in a little bit of vinegar. So, did you guys know that if you run vinegar through your dishwasher or your washing machine, that it helps to clean the line? See, learn something new every day. Okay, so that's why I'm using vinegar instead of using water. Because I want to have that vinegar there. Plus, vinegar is such a great cleaning agent. You just, you can't go wrong with vinegar. Definitely love vinegar to clean with. I'm pouring this in and I'm not telling you the amount. <laughs> but you're going to be using about a cup of vinegar. And I'm pouring it in a little bit at a time. But the soap is melting quite nicely. And like I said, you can always add a fragrance to your soap. If maybe you can smell the vinegar or something in your, you know, I don't know. Some people may be able to smell it. Some can't. I always add, I put like my favorite body wash or <laughs> some of anything. You can use like the essential oils and do a lavender or, a, you know, tea tree oil or carrot oil. Carrot oil smells good to me. But <laughs> that's totally up to you. So. And that's the rest of the one cup. I just did it little bits at a time. So, we're going to let this melt some more and do its thing. But like I said, you can add whatever fragrance you want to it once you get it into the bucket. So, let's let this finish melting and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So, like I said before, you will... I'm making mine in a really big bucket. I have put some of the powdered mixture that I've mixed together really, really well. If you can see here, right? This is the borax and the water washing soda. And I've already put a little bit of it here in the bucket. Some of the bigger chunks. Got that in there. And now I'll just take and pour a little of the hot water. Like I said, for me, I'm making a really, really, really big batch. So, I know to fill this up with water. And this is my mixing stick, y'all. <laughs> but you would just take and sit here and chop up any lumps that you see. This is why I like to have like a little hot water to start with in the bottom. And I put my clumps in here first. Because my smoother makes sure I'm not having to worry about clumps as much. But you're going to be doing a lot of stirring, so have a good arm. This is my soap. Okay? You see, I left mine at a... You can get a smoother consistency if you want it. But I left mine at a chunkier consistency because I know I'm dealing with a whole lot of hot water. And... That hot water is going to melt it just fine. So I'll go ahead and pour that in. Sorry for the noise. I know that's annoying. 
I should actually do a video about all the things on YouTube that annoy me. I would probably get tons and tons of hits. Because <laughs> there are a lot of things. Okay. So now we've got some soap in here. And we're just going to alternate some of the powder formula, some of the water. Some of the powder, some of the water. Back and forth. So since I've done a lot of water, I'm going to go ahead and pour some of the powder in. And if you don't want to do this on such a large scale, I will have the amount of water that you're going to need. Everything is very equal. Two quarts, maybe, of water depends on how thick you want your detergent. <laughs> Things like that. So, here, I'm going to mix this while I chat with you. <laughs> And like I said, you can always add your own fragrances to this. If you have a child who is sensitive to certain detergents and you want to try making it and see if that works, use the type of bath soap that the baby is used to bathing in. Cannot say that enough. Let's see here. I'm sorry, I was laughing at my daughter, I'm sorry. Okay, but yeah, use the bath soap that the child is used to bathing in. So then you know you're using at least one thing that won't hurt the child's skin. As far as borax and the washing soda, I would ask a doctor. I would suggest that you ask the doctor. But if you're feeling good about it or you've used it before, go for it. So let's see here, we're going to pour in some more water. And now more powder. Okay. And these things, I really should have saw these yellow things off. That would make my job so much easier. But of course I like a challenge. But once you have this all mixed and everything's in here and all is well, <laughs> you want to let this sit for exactly 24 hours, if not longer, so it can just settle and liquefy the way it should. Then you will have your liquid detergent. So I will put the recipe. It keeps steaming up my screen because the water's so hot. But I'll put the recipe on my blog and also in the description here on YouTube. That's the end of the powder. But yep, yeah, that's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Very, very simple. Very simple. Fill it up with water. Stir it together well. Put the lid on it. Let it sit 24 hours and you're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you next week if not before.